Hello! As you can tell by the link poster behind me that's not mine, and the books that are, I'm at home in my childhood bedroom. Now, one of the things my family likes to do when I'm home for the holidays is to sit down and watch old movies, including White Christmas. For those of you who don't know, White Christmas was originally a song in another movie called Holiday Inn, but the bigwigs at the studio decided it was such a hit that they should make a whole new Christmas movie around it. And, as you would expect of a movie musical based around a Christmas song, the plot feels a bit like an afterthought. It basically goes like this. One soldier saves another soldier's life during World War II and then spends the rest of the movie guilting him into letting him be in his stage show? Through some convoluted movie logic, they end up in Vermont where they find their old general who now runs this failing scheme resort? And they decide to save this guy's business by, you guessed it, putting on a big show. And along the way they meet these two women who are also performers and of course they fall in love with them. Don't get me wrong, there is top talent in this movie. Rosemary Clooney and Bing Crosby are these amazing famous singers. Vera Ellen is this kind of superhuman dancer and Danny Kaye is just this wonderful professional Hollywood goofball. <laughs> So the movie is fun to watch, but it does have some moments that are kind of bad. Ah, here is the riddle that I love the best. Why does a chicken go and know the rest? No, I don't know the rest. Why does a chicken go and know the rest? I need to know! Also, the song that that bit comes from starts like this. I'd rather see a minstrel show than any. Now, they don't use blackface, which is good, but I still can definitely not forgive this movie because it was made in the 50s. They'd had nearly 100 years and they still hadn't learned that minstrel shows are racist. And, you know, maybe they would have figured it out sooner if they'd cast more black characters than the disembodied hand serving them drinks in the dining car. Another weird thing about this movie, there's a lot of pro-military propaganda. Gee, I wish I was back in the army. The army wasn't really bad at all. Three meals a day, three for which you didn't pay. Uniforms for winter, spring, and fall. You can tell that the Cold War was in full swing, especially because Irving Berlin, the guy who wrote all the songs for this movie, wrote a very similar sounding song when he was an actual soldier during World War I that went something like this. Someday I'm going to murder the Fuhrer. Someday they're going to find him dead. I'll amputate his reveille and step upon his heavily and spend the rest of my life in bed. That's a 180 degree turn if I've ever seen one. Somebody was afraid of the blacklists. Also, there's this weird moment when the Bing Crosby character goes on TV to try to get a bunch of his former platoon to show up at their general's ski resort during the big show, and he says this. Who's got a job for a general when he stops being a general? They all get a job but a general no one hires. Basically, he's saying that generals have a hard time finding jobs after wars end? This movie was made in 1953. This guy was President of the United States. So there's a lot of disbelief suspending that goes into watching this movie. But the music is great, so it's probably still worth watching. Critically. When I'm worried and I can't sleep I count my blessings instead of sheep. I fall asleep counting my blessings.